Yeah, we're very excited to be here. Um, I think our presentation is a little out of the box <laughs> compared to most that are here today. Um, basically, we're going to talk about content because we've heard a lot about data, installs, uh, retention, and we all know how important these topics are, but I believe that content comes first, and uh, that's why we're going to talk about how to market user-generated content for mobile acquisition. That was as short as I could get the title, so I'm really sorry about it. Spent a long time on it. And uh, we're going to talk about how to acquire it, how to develop it, and finally how to optimize it. And yes, it is Dennis's birthday, and um, I was hoping that you could all do me a big favor and uh, possibly tweet about us using the uh, wonder carpool hashtag, because some of our colleagues are quite skeptical that we're actually working here, and they think that we're partying at some of the uh, most famous clubs in Berlin, and of course, we're doing both, so <laughs> <laughs> please help us out, it might save our jobs. Um, so, Probably you're wondering why there's uh, two speakers. It's a good question. Um, as this slide suggests, it is art meets science, and I will be representing the artistic component. I'm a filmmaker. I have been a filmmaker for 10 years, producing commercial content uh, for various brands in my native Australia and in the USA, and now I work for Wonder. Um, and it was incredibly exciting when I started to enter such a data-driven, number-driven environment, and also incredibly terrifying for an artist because we don't know anything about numbers. I used to think the number three was an emoji symbol. That's really how much uh, I really don't know about numbers. So, um, but it was, of course, the thing that unlocked some of my, my biggest discoveries lately, um, particularly regarding optimization and I'm going to talk about that very soon. But for now, the birthday boy uh, and the scientific component of our speech, Mr. Dennis Ferner. So, um, yeah, actually what that means, he's creating the content, I'm choosing the target audience and try to make the numbers looking good. Uh, CPIs, CPS, yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, so, yeah, uh, my background is I am uh, worked for Airbnb and did a lot of community uh, work there, and, uh, yeah, I try to brought this as well to Wunder. And uh, you probably ask yourself, what is Wunder? Um, we're facing in emerging markets uh, the problem that public transportation is really shitty. Like, uh, you're seeing this picture. This is actually in front of a train station. People waiting in line one hour to go into a train station. The train station, they're waiting half an hour. After that, they get squeezed into a train and then going to work. Then you don't want to work anymore because you're stressed. And uh, yeah, we think carpooling is a solution for it. Uh, second problem, uh, not working, click. Uh, owning a car in a merchant market is quite expensive, so not everybody can afford it. And saving money to take uh, passengers with you uh, is a good way to, um, yeah, to afford a car. And the third, way is um, there is no easy access to carpooling. So of course, what we did, we did an app. <laughs> this is the reason why oh. we are here. Um, click. 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 So, okay. Uh, we're doing um, the whole marketing from Hamburg. And um, yeah, we started to launch the app in Manila in the Philippines. So the first problem what you have when you're doing marketing over there, the culture is so different. When you're stepping out of an airplane in this market, you think, whoa, where are you? What is happening here with the advertising? And so uh, this is one of the reasons why we focus on user-generated content. So uh, second point is um, one of the key challenges we have, like when we're focusing just on the area of Metro Manila, we have uh, 15 million people there on Facebook to target, 5 million are my interest group, 1 million uh, is like my lookalike group uh, where I'm interested to market on. Um, the problem is there, they don't want to see the same content every time. So the third point, um, the frequency of the content production is really, really high. So um, we're shooting out everyday ads with different content. Um, 
Like when I've talked to some people, when your videos are four months, uh, we have to produce a bit more. This is why we got into user-generated content. Um, what is the benefit of it? It don't have to be perfect. Like this picture, I would never take uh, when I do marketing. This looks terrible. But the story behind it and the guy who sent it to us, he is really amazing. Basically, he said his first words like, "The first three weeks, the app didn't work for me, but now it's working, and uh, this is really good. We can uh, take the story out to the people and tell them." Um, as well, it shows a reality. Um, me as a German, I can't imagine to sit in a polo with six people. They sending us, where is it? Uh, there we go, six people in a car. And uh, sometimes you're really lucky and you get the magic shot. Like this picture is like, has like 26,000 uh, 26, likes on Facebook um, because they just look awesome. <laughs> uh, and it's, it was for free. So uh, we acquired a few thousand people with this picture and we didn't have to spend anything. Uh, if we would produce the content, uh, we would have to spend a few hundred euros each week and of course my CPI or CPS is going up with that. So um, now I try to show you the first six steps, what we did, and then um, Jared is continuing what his magic is. Um, so first of all, it's a, about communication style, so we don't see uh, customers, we see a community, and we want to uh, create a movement. So we don't speak to people, hey, you have to use the app in this way. We try to interact with them. And so, um, yeah, to engage with people, you have to engage them, and they have to tell their friends. Um, to get the first real testimonial is quite a hustle because you have to call them, you have to write SMS. In the Philippines, you, you have to use Viber. And then when you have your first picture out there, you have to do it again, because the second one is as hard as the first one. But after a while, people get used to it, and when I see somebody else uh, who is doing a picture of a carpool and gets a few thousand likes, I want to be as well the guy, because I'm a driver as well. So, um, yeah, then um, after we got some approaches, we have to funnel it. So one of the things is uh, we created a hashtag, and we're getting now by day, two to four pictures out of the community who really want to be posted on our Facebook wall or want to be used in ads. And uh, it's like really funny. They're writing us a picture here. This is our carpool friends. And then if you don't respond, hey, this is really my carpool friends. And a week later, hey, dude, post that. And so, um, yeah, it's quite cool how we engage the people. Um, next step after how we can collect it uh, is how we can engage them, and then we do competition. Every human wants to be better than somebody else, or most of them wants to be, and so competition is a really nice way to engage a community. And not, last but not least, you have to be really responsive on uh, social media. Um, yeah, so... Ah, that slide should be out. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I do this? I feel magical doing this. <laughs> Um, so this is where I came in with Wanda and where I'm coming in into the speech because we moved into video, it was the next stage of user-generated content. And what I want to do is show you three videos um, and I, hopefully this kind of um, outlines the evolution that user-generated content took. But firstly, I just want to show a raw piece of footage that a, a community member sent to us. And this is what I was working with. As a filmmaker 10 years, and this is what I saw for the first time. Roll it. <laughs> hey. Hey, wonder friends. Hello. Celebrating my birthday with my newfound friends. Happy birthday, Dio. Thank you. Four more, three more seconds. Um. So yeah, it is what it is. It's um, it's it's doesn't look particularly great. It doesn't sound particularly great. Their faces aren't quite in frame. Um, in filmmaking terms, it's pretty bad. So I um, I was like, okay, but it's real. It's totally real, and I think there's potential with it to connect to people. Um, so the next step was of 
of, of course, to take footage like this and to create some kind of video out of it. And uh, if we could roll the next video. Hi, good morning. My name is Marby. I'm a Wonder App user. My name is Ali and I'm Ovi. Hey, Wonder Friends! Hello. Celebrating my birthday with my newfound friends! Happy Good morning! There's one handsome guy right there. for close to three weeks already. The application works and it has been helping. And I just dropped off A and Aldwin. I carpool with them to work along with some other neighbors from the east area of Metro Manila. Wonder is very safe. So yeah, um, this video did really, really well. It uh, garnered almost a million views. It performed really well at a low cost per sign up. And I couldn't help but wonder why. <laughs> um, and I think it's because um, it's so genuine. And it's like the Brian Tracy quote, the why we do things is much more important than the how we do things. And when you show your potential demographic people that they can really relate to and why they use your product, there's uh, nothing better than this. And I took this simple idea and I experimented with it. And the third video that I'm going to show you is a video that um, attempts to inject Filipino culture within a testimonial video. I don't know if you know anything about Filipino culture, but they love singing, they love karaoke, so why not cram a little of that into a testimonial video? Makes sense, right? I mean, that's just a logical next step. <laughs> I think Wonder App is helping Manila a lot. I get to save on money, and I get to where I need to go fast. By helping decongest the traffic. Making your way downtown, walking fast. Just fast when I'm homebound. I can go home earlier. <laughs> because of less hassle with commuting. Making my way. Making my way through the. I get to meet amazing people along the way. I get to meet people who are from different places, who go in the same direction, who I didn't know lived near my house, but were actually amazing people. And now I wonder. I think you should try this. So, it's a little example of why you can take user generated footage. Um, lastly, because you know, we are running out of time, I just wanted to end with probably my key learning. Um, I mentioned how terrified of numbers I was when I started the speech. But you know, after you release so many videos, you, you realize certain ones do well and certain ones don't do so well. And even if you take your formulas and your emotions and everything that you want to put into it artistically, there has to be a reason why that happens. So I had to turn to the dreaded numbers. And um, the thing that really helped me the most was using Facebook's um, engagement analytics and really seeing where my audience was dropping off and why and at what points and forming a structure around my audience's engagement. And um, if we can go to the next slide, my man. <laughs> um, I think that the structure that really works for me is in the first three seconds to present a problem that your audience can absolutely relate to. I mean, I usually wait 30, 40 minutes for a bus. I mean, that really sucks if you do that every morning. Um, and then you get on a bus and you have to stand up again for another 30, 40 minutes, you'd probably watch my videos too if you could empathize with that. And the second point um, that I think is very important is that in the first 10 seconds, could you go to the next one? Thank you. Um, is to promise a solution to that exact problem. And of course, in our situation, it's carpooling. It's an alternative to that painful pressure. And then, if you do that, you have a very high chance of engaging your audience to watch the rest of your video. And if we can go to the third one. Um, and in the rest of the video, if you present a convincing case that your product is that solution, then I think you will have um, a lot greater success with your video content. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate your time. We please go to the next slide. Um, please connect uh, with Dennis and I over our LinkedIn page. 
Um, we're the only company here uh, potentially hiring, um, <laughs> but um, please connect with us and go to our careers page and of course, go to our social media outlets and follow our content. Thank you so much. Have a really great rest of the summit. Thank you so much. <laughs>